Hi, I'm Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. Have you ever spent a lot of time and maybe a lot of money redoing a room in your home only to discover when you're finished that it's not quite what you were hoping for? It somehow lacks that wow factor. Well, today I'm going to show you how to add those finishing touches that will take your home decor from so-so to spectacular. So, let's get started. After a great deal of research, I created this list of 10 finishing touches that most interior decorators agree will take your home decor from so-so to spectacular. Rooms are most visually interesting when objects are of varying heights, with some items above eye level. Notice how the plant and window stand out in a room where everything is at the same level. To create an extra tall floral arrangement, I decided to use this thrifted pepper mill as a vase. I unscrewed the top and the metal strap on the base so that I could pull out the center metal rod. And then I gave it a good cleaning with some liquid sandpaper. I considered painting it, but decided to leave the natural wood. I also decided to reattach the lid. So to drill a larger hole in the center, I used a spade drill bit. Then I used super glue to reattach it to the pepper mill. Because it's so tall and lightweight, I added a few big rocks in the base to keep it from tipping over. I reattached the little metal strap to keep the rocks inside. When I began disassembling this thrifted floral arrangement, I discovered gravel in the vase, and so I added a couple handfuls to the pepper mill for extra weight. Then I began pulling flowers from the thrifted arrangement. There were so many nice ones to choose from. When I was happy with my arrangement, I added a bow with extra long tails to accentuate the height of the pepper mill. Another way to create an extra tall arrangement is to use branches from your yard. I actually got this idea from the TV show Homework. Many artificial plants and flowers will have a hole when pulled off of the stem. So I applied hot glue to the ends of my real branches and slid on the fake leaves. I also glued on some fake buds even though they didn't have a hole in their stems. The leaves are actually well adhered, so I think this will last a long time. I recently redid the window treatments in my bedroom, but there was one more project I wanted to do that I thought would really take them to the next level. I purchased this 8-foot MDF board and cut off a few inches so that it would fit perfectly between the two bookshelves in my bedroom. Then, using my electric stapler, I covered the front of the board with a coverlet that I purchased at Goodwill for just $4. I have a lot of fabric left that I'll be able to use on other projects, too. If you use a thin fabric to cover your board, I would recommend applying some batting 
underneath the fabric first. I attached two L brackets at each end of the board. I would be using these to attach this cornice between the two bookshelves in my bedroom. After lining up the cornice and marking the spots, I pre-drilled the holes. Then I tightened the screws going through the L bracket to hold the cornice in place. Then I lowered my window treatments so that the hardware would be hidden behind the cornice. I also patched up the old holes with some spackling. I would touch up the paint later. I thrifted this fabric remnant to use for another window treatment in my bedroom. I cut the fabric in half, creating two long strips. Then I stitched them together along the short end to create one long strip. I folded all four edges over about a half an inch and pressed in place. I folded the bottom edge a second time and pressed it in place. Then I folded the top edge over about two inches and pinned it in place. Then I stitched all four sides of the curtain panel, leaving a pocket at the top for a curtain rod. I had recently thrifted a bag of fringe for a couple dollars and decided to hot glue some on along the hemline of the bottom of the curtain panel. I could have sewn it on, but hot gluing it on just seemed easier. I ran a $3 tension rod through the pocket at the top of the curtain panel and hung it at the ceiling level so that I could still open and close the shutter on the window if I wanted to. There are a number of ways you can add texture to a room with pillows, throws, baskets, rugs, pottery. I used a table runner from my dining room to add texture to the foot of my bed. Sometimes the smallest things can really notch up your home decor. I still had fabric and fringe left after making the small window valance and decided that I would use it to cover this dog bed to create a cushion for my window seat. I cut out two rectangles of fabric slightly larger than the dog bed. Then I pinned the fringe around the edges of one of the rectangles on the pretty side of the fabric. Make sure you pin it so that the fringe faces inward. I like to go ahead and stitch the fringe in place and remove those pins. Then, with the pretty side facing down, I take the second rectangle of fabric and pin it to the first rectangle. Then I sew the two pieces together following my previous stitch lines. Make sure you don't sew it completely shut. You want to leave an opening large enough that you can squeeze the dog bed inside. Once your sides are stitched together, use the hole to turn the pillowcase right side out. I thought the dog bed was a little too fluffy for a cushion, and luckily there was a zipper that I could open and remove some of the stuffing, which I saved to use for future projects. Then I sewed my opening closed. I have already completed a number of lighting projects in my bedroom, including creating this pendant out of a thrifted basket, recovering the lampshades on two lamps on our nightstands, painting and adding trim to this once ugly lamp, and hanging a chandelier in the corner of my room. 
To add a finishing touch to the chandelier, I bought some inexpensive cotton fabric from Walmart. I ripped off about a four inch wide strip of fabric and sewed it into a tube and slipped it over the exposed cord. Now you just notice the chandelier and the cord fades into the background. More than anything else, your walls and what is on them or is not on them creates the atmosphere of a room. I decided to make some changes to my small gallery wall to include the butterfly plate that I made in last week's video. Unfortunately, it fell off the wall and broke, so I replaced it with this thrifted peacock picture and this butterfly sconce. As you may remember, my husband insisted that he keep his coat rack in the bedroom, and so I needed to rearrange this side of the dresser too. So I took down the shelf and added a few more pictures, including the dragonfly coasters from last week's video. Nothing adds life to a space quite like plants and flowers. Notice how the plants in the room on the right add interest to an otherwise boring room. And artificial plants and flowers have the same impact. Here's a fun idea for creating a realistic faux plant. Pour coffee grounds into a pretty glass container, such as an old kerosene lamp. Add a little styrofoam for easy arranging, and then add your faux stems. I pulled some from a thrifted basket. Be sure to add some longer stems for interest and to make it look more realistic. You can also create an interesting arrangement by cutting individual flowers off of their stems and hot gluing them onto branches, like I did earlier with the eucalyptus leaves. Even cheap and fake looking flowers suddenly look authentic when glued to real branches. And it's a great way to make use of some floral scraps you may have on hand. Remember, we want pretty homes, not showrooms, so make sure to include objects that reflect your personality. I love clocks and butterflies, and since my butterfly plate fell off the wall and broke, I decided to make a butterfly clock. I popped out the clock face, painted it with a couple coats of chalk paint, and lightly distressed it. Then I hot glued on a cardboard coaster to cover the hole in the back. I trimmed up the coaster and then I traced around the clock on a piece of cardstock and cut it out and hot glued it to clean up the back side of the clock. I made a small bird nest by wiring some angel hair vine together in a small circle. Then I hot glued a little Spanish moss in the center of the nest. I added two blue beads for eggs, and I also added some scrap greenery that I had on hand. Like I had done on the previous butterfly plate, I used the front transparent part of a Dollar Tree butterfly sticker and hot glued a few in various places on the clock. 
I added a couple small sticks and hot glued on some tiny flowers because I am obsessed with this technique. Grouping objects together to tell a story is a fun and easy way to add interest to any room. To create a vignette in the alcove with my window seat, I would need a shelf. Using a mallet, I knocked off the brackets from an old thrifted wood shelf. To make them slightly smaller, I cut about a half an inch off of the top of each bracket with my miter saw and then I adhered them to an old cigar box using construction adhesive. For extra stability, I added a few small screws through the base of the cigar box and into each bracket. My brackets already had holes in the back for hanging, so I attached a couple screws to the wall and I was able to easily hang up my cigar box shelf. You can include practical items in your vignettes as well. I like to keep a bottle of water on my nightstand, so I decided why not make it pretty and match my bedroom decor. I applied some IOD transfers and then sealed them with dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I decided this bottle was larger than I wanted, so I made a second smaller one. A tray is a great way to add a pop of color in a room and to corral the items in a vignette. I painted this pretty tray with the paint left over from painting my dresser, Sensible Sage Chalk Paint by rust -Oleum. I had recently picked up these pretty floral napkins at Tuesday morning and wanted to use one inside the tray. I peeled off the back ply of these two ply napkins and then I cut it down so that it would fit perfectly inside the tray. Because the tray was pretty large, I applied Mod Podge to just half of the tray to start out with and then I smoothed half of the napkin over the Mod Podge. Then I applied Mod Podge to the rest of the tray and smoothed out the remaining half of the napkin. Then I went over the top of the napkin with another coat of Mod Podge. If a little piece of the napkin tears off, you can easily fix it by tearing a coordinating piece from another napkin and Mod Podging over it. You'll never know the difference. To finish off the tray, I distressed the sides a little with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of clear wax wiping off the excess. Notice how this tray adds a pop of interesting color to this neutral ottoman. I have mentioned before the importance of adding circles and curves to soften all of the rectangles found in rooms. I decided to turn a thrifted cross stitch into a round pillow. I traced around a charger plate to create a perfect circle. Then I pinned some pom-pom trim over the pencil line, making sure that it pointed inward on the right side of the fabric. I stitched the pom-pom in place and removed the pins. 
Then I placed it face down on a thrifted napkin. I pinned these two together, making sure that the pom-pom stayed inside. Then I stitched the two together, leaving a hole large enough for my hand to fit through. I trimmed off the extra fabric and turned the pillow right side out. I then stuffed the pillow using some of the stuffing that I had taken out of the dog bed. Then I just hot glued the opening closed. I hope I was able to share some ideas today that you might not have thought about. And if your home decor is lacking that wow factor, I hope you'll let me know which of the finishing touches you'll be trying out. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. See you next Tuesday. Bye bye for now. I let mama in. Can I let me in? Okay. Only to discover when you're finished that it's not quite what you were hoping for. Mm -hmm.